Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Data Recovery Procedures with HDD. Uh, today I want to cover a special topic. Uh, this doesn't happen often um, enough anymore, but it used to be a huge deal uh, with Western Digital, specifically one family of these drives. So let me connect uh, this hard drive to our machine. This, uh, this is a patient's drive actually. And um, we'll see what happens. Have available channel zero right here. test on this drive. Since we have it hooked up to the channel zero, power it on. The drive spins up. It calibrates and comes up ready like normally. Okay, but uh, if we were to go in and test it, The family that it gives us is Tornado 2D and this problem was really really common along a lot of Tornado drives. It goes into the utility, it gives us access uh, to the utility actually and uh, maybe even will allow us to read sectors partially. But here's what happens if we begin to image it. I'll power it on and I'll just go into express test. Express test just does the verification of the surface just to see what the condition is like and it shows if it's stumbling across uh, some sectors that may be harder to read. And we're just gonna start it right from the beginning. As soon as I power it on, the drive turns off. It goes to the next sector and it turns off again. You guys can hear that. These clicking sounds that the drive did. That's what's happening. Okay, it just will not image for, for some reason, okay? So I'm gonna power this off. We have a donor here. This donor actually has dead heads already. We tested it, we don't really need that drive for anything specific. So this is gonna be our donor device. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'll explain a couple of ways that this can be done. This can be done in the hard form if this drive has external ROM chip or it can be done using this utility that I'm using, which is PC3000 in this case. Uh, we have to go vendor specific on this one, okay? And I have to back up all of the, uh, all of the ROM information for this drive. Just gonna disable modules and tracks. We don't need them right now. So it's been backed up. We're gonna turn it off. And I'm gonna have a look at how this drive is designed. Because if it doesn't have external ROM, then there's only one solution, and that's just by transferring that firmware uh, using PC3000. But if uh, it does have an external ROM chip, I'll show you which chip can be moved, and you can probably do it at home if you have something along the lines of um, rework station. Now, here's the problem. This drive actually does not have external ROM, okay? This position right here, U12, on Western Digital, supposed to have an eight-legged component in there. That's your external EEP ROM. In our case, the ROM is actually embedded in, into this marble chip. So the only way that we can actually extract it is to use this utility. 
for help. Now since this drive that we're using right now is actually um, is actually uh, pretty much dead because it, it's got dead heads in it, we can't really use it for any other purposes other than PCB. And the PCB, I'll go with an assumption that it's good. And how to, one of the ways to test it actually, to see if it's good or not, is when you unbolt it. This used to be a really popular way to, to test it. You look at this gasket right here, that little sponge thing that goes between uh, the PCB and the, and the block of the drive. And if you see, there's like corroded, crappy stains around uh, main components, then rest assured that that PCB is no good. But in our case, it is good. I'm just gonna show you guys that this drive doesn't work. And then I'll also show you that just by swapping it directly to our uh, patient's drive, our patient's drive is not gonna work either. So that step of transferring uh, adaptive data from the PCB is very important in data recovery. You see, you did those three clicks. That's usually an indication of a head failure on the Western Digital of that vintage. So I'm going to go back into the utility since we're already in here. So we just might exit for the good measures. It's the same family, Tornado 2D, but it only allows access in the kernel mode this time, but which is all we really need. We're gonna go in and back up uh, information from the ROM chip. Gonna call it backup. And we're gonna also back up the ROM modules. Now that we've done that, we can go in. Actually, let's try this first. We'll try and see if we get if we get access to the data just by swapping these two rows directly. So this is the bad drive, I wrote good on the board, this is a good drive, but I got a little X on the board. You see, these are the stains that I was talking about on the gasket. So this board is also has a U12 component missing. It's not on there. Okay, so the only way that we can actually use this PCB, actually this PCB is no good, but the only way that we can use this PCB would be by taking the adaptive data that's in there and uh, writing it into the good board. I'm gonna use a clean gasket this time.
hook it up to the channel zero. Okay, the sounds went on. Uh, it sounds like the drive is idling. It doesn't spin down, which is a good sign. Uh, let's swoop over here. Okay, but here's the problem. We don't have a model serial number firmware and the capacity registers as zero. And the reason for that is because adapters are not matching. They only have, the only access that we have to this drive is uh, through the kernel mode. So if we were to, let's say, attempt to read a sector, it is gonna come back with an error abort. Okay, if you wanna read like sector 100, for example, or 1000, it won't let us. So if we go and uh, record the uh, ROM from the from the um, patient's drive, the original ROM from the patient's drive. Okay, now we have to just repower it once. Okay, we got a ready signal. Now we're gonna go and record the ROM modules from that same patient. Okay, all the modules are written now. now I'm gonna exit the utility. I'm gonna power the drive back on. and re-attempt accessing the vendor-specific utility. This information here in the corner indicates that the drive is recognized. I'm gonna go into sector edit. There's the first sector in the hex view. I'm gonna exit and go and run the express test now to see if we're actually gonna be able to image the device. And I'm gonna start the same way right from the beginning. And as you guys can see, these green blocks are now appearing. Instead of the red, really, really slow process and constant power down, we're actually getting the data. So right now this drive is good to go on the imager and uh, we can begin imaging the information out for the client. So if you guys need assistance with your inaccessible hard drive, Feel free to contact us. We specialize in this stuff and be, we will be really happy to assist you. Follow us, like this video, we'll be back with more.